Hi, this is Supreme Bharti, and we are here at Chupan and Cloud Redicon in Atlanta. And today we have with us Daniel Cook, your Senior Product Marketing Manager at Akamai. Daniel, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. If I'm not wrong, you are moderating a panel here. First of all, talk a bit about this panel and the panelists. We put together an amazing lineup of women who work in observability to talk around the, the whole topic of beyond the dashboard, like what are we trying to actually work with with this observability? And how do you figure out what to actually observe? Because there's so much noise. So I'm being joined with Whitney Lee, uh, Payal from Intuit. I am, we have uh, Kalea from Eon. So end users um, talking about everything observability. What is part uh, the idea of this panel? And second, you also mentioned they're all women. Yes. Uh, so what is the driver behind that as well? So there are two, four questions. All right. So, um, you know, when you were at KubeCon, every other booth has observability on it. And so when we were trying to, um, you know, came together, we thought if we could provide some clarity to attendees to say, what should I actually look for? How do I know what to um, what the noise levels are and how can I turn them up or turn them down based on what will deliver actual metrics. Um, and so we pulled this group together. Uh, it is a female panel. It's great to have leaders in this space, to have them have a voice. Uh, the KubeCon, Cloud Native Con um, community is diverse and giving everybody an opportunity to be on the platform is, is great. What made this community this diverse and included? Is it the people or it's the technologies? Or I, because no, I'm sitting next to one person who is driving a lot of these things. I think it is the people who have done it. You know, people are coming to this community from all areas and, you know, they might be a technologist, they might be, you know, a marketing person. They might, there's, there's so many different ways to get involved with this community. But the people make you feel included. And there's amazing people like Catherine Paganini, who she started Merge Forward or works on that, that is all about bringing people together. Um, there's the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group. Like there's places within this community that you can get involved to make sure other people are involved. And I think everybody plays a role in that. And because everybody plays a role, it is a great place to be. What kind of, you know, um themes that you feel will emerge from it? Is it going to be about, uh, you know, reliability? Is it going to be about developer productivity? Is it going to be about cost efficiency? Or is it going to be about AI? Everything's about AI at this, this year's KubeCon. So we will be touching upon that, but we're going to be looking at it from, does AI, do you need to use AI to help you observe? Or are you, um, are using AI as a tool. And so differentiating those will be a key theme, but also we're gonna be looking at the developer experience and asking those questions. How can you make it easy for a developer to use observability in their day-to-day -day jobs that will make an impact on the business? And so we're gonna look at metrics um, around SLOs, but also how it, it go, meets business goals. This may be totally out of context. You mentioned, you know, are you going to use AI or you're going to do AI as a tool? What about AI as a workload itself? AI as a workload itself. I mean, I mean, you, you uh, represent Akamai, you know, and absolutely. you folks actually run AI workload for the folks. Absolutely. Um, it's another area that you need to be observing. Is it working right? Where's the problem areas? How do I make this more successful? So absolutely. There is observability at every single part of the stack and the infrastructure and the cloud, everything, but it's super noisy. And that that's, you know, pulls us back to the beginning of this. How do you break through that noise? What is the most important part? And since we are talking about AI, can you also talk about what kind of patterns, trend you are seeing where teams are adding intelligence, you know? Of course, we have been talking about automation for very long, but AI brings intelligence to their observability pipelines without making things more complicated because complexity and Kubernetes is like synonyms to each other. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have all the answers on that. Um, I think that it's a really, you know, one of the things I've said to people is, you know, you're using Kubernetes, so you're accepting that it's complex. You're accepting to take on all of these challenges and how you knit it together and bring every layer together. And what are the add-ons you need? And how does Argo fit in? All of these pieces. Now we have AI on top of it. It's even more complex. And I think as a community, we're here to try and figure that out together because we want to make sure that everybody is building and using cloud native because that's where you need to be running your AI workloads, but we need to simplify it. Uh, you're also CNCF ambassador. What kind of discussions are you hearing within the community when it comes to AI? No, I'm not talking about the announcement that vendors are making, but what are you hearing from within the community? So it's part of the reason I became a CNCF ambassador is because I um, am a co-organizer of the Cartographist Working Group. We write and maintain, wrote and maintain the cloud native maturity model. And when we first put it together, we didn't talk about AI at all in it. And this was back in 2021. We have just released the latest model, which looks at incorporating AI throughout the model. Where do you use it? Where is it appropriate to use it? At what level of maturity can you adopt AI? And are you adopting it across your entire stack or in one little piece here? And so navigating that is an area that definitely the entire CNCF is thinking about. There's an AI working group that is spending a lot of time talking about how to adopt this in a safe way um, to, again, make sure people are more efficient, are more productive, but are doing it safely. I mean, you're very, very active in this community. You are also co-founder of Cube Crash. Yes. Uh, talk a bit about Cube Crash, those who don't know, and I think it's been eight years now, something like that. Yeah, so just uh, talk a bit about that and uh, uh, how you're seeing that evolving. So with Cube Crash, um, a number of us came together and we wanted to create a virtual event for people who couldn't come to KubeCon but wanted the amazing content. So we started with, you know, a two-hour conference and it's now turned into, you know, a day-long conference. We recruit some amazing speakers um, and we ask our community of attendees what they want to hear about. And the last three Cube Crashes, people want to talk platform engineering. That's what they want to talk about. That's where the problems are. Um, we see more and more people saying platform engineering and AI. Um, and so we will, when we are planning for our next year to crashes, we will also ask our audience again and we'll see what they want to hear. So far, whatever interviews I have done here at the show for, a lot of them are about AI and uh, sorry, you know. What is, I mean, is it, is it just me or this is the theme this year here? What are you observing? This is absolutely the theme, but is it the theme because we all, it's the hot topic and everybody wants to be part of the hot topic? Are we going to see this all in production? I think, I think, I think it's, you know, so too early to tell where it's going to be useful. Um, we see some surveys coming out where AI is taking over the world and is the most useful tool. And, and then we see other ones where like, maybe not so much. So I think there's just a lot of change happening and you know, the people who are willing to adapt to the change and be agile, I think you have to be that personally and you have to do that professionally. When it comes to Akamai, Akamai, if I'm not wrong, is the creator of CDN. They're a pioneer of this space. They focus a lot of security. Then with the acquisition of Linode, you know, in enterprise space, streaming space, they are a very well-known name. They are, you know, big player, but they are relatively newcomers to the KubeCon CNCF landscape. Uh, as a CNCF ambassador who has been part of this community for so long, what kind of culture do you see within Akamai? And since now Akamai's presence at KubeCon is also growing every year, how are you seeing their presence evolving within this ecosystem? When I came to Akamai, one of the reasons I wanted to join the company is because of the really smart people that work at the company. I work within the cloud technology group, and I'm constantly amazed at the engineering team that is uh, working on LKE, our managed Kubernetes engine, developing App Platform, which is our open source tool that knits all of these projects together. Um, all the CNCF projects together to, to allow you to make your own IDP. Um, 
And there's a lot of you know, investment in this space because this this you cloud native is where AI workloads have to run. And what we announced um, a few weeks ago was our Akamai Inference Cloud, which pulls together everything you mentioned. Our cloud infrastructure, it pulls together our security. We have a number of security tools that are protecting all the AI landscape. And then it also brings together our edge. So putting that together allows us to enable companies to run inference at the edge. And that's going to be really, really important as AI continues to take over the world. If you look at Akamai, if you look at your own, you know, what, what are the things that, not that they keep you excited, but the exciting things that you see are coming, where we'll see more engagement of Akamai and your involvement as well? I am super excited to, um, to see Akamai kind of support the AI future. I think we have trained the models and now we need to take that and we need to get it into the hands of users. And the experiences that people are gonna have with AI from a personal point of view, from a professional point of view, Akamai is going to be there powering that and making that happen. Danielle, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about the upcoming panel, your role within Akamai and CNCF and the things that you're excited about. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank but I so look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Perfect.